Let's talk the Great Fee Extravaganza. Time for an update. Well, we've been promising you guys that we would update you about uh, the 2020 Great P Extravaganza at Brainstorm Acres this year. Well, let's start by telling people that I'm Henry. And I'm Irene. And we're Brainstorm Acres. And what we did this year was a massive pea experiment for shelling peas. We both really like shelling peas, and we've always had some difficulty growing them here. We had one year that, that worked out pretty well, but we have a lot of insect pressure, a lot of heat pressure, a lot of cold pressure, a lot of things going on. So we planted our peas in several different ways. I have my facts. I went to my notebook, I checked to see what the dates were and stuff. And I compared it to last year. Would I do it again? Yes. Would I do it the same way? No. We started out at the beginning of the season. Back on March 5th, we did a 162 tray. Now what that means is those are the, the big trays that have 162 holes in them. And I did one, one pea in each hole. Then I did on the 6th, we did two gutters. Two of us worked together on that one. And we planted two regular rain gutters full of peas. I think the total package is something like 2,500. Then we did four short rows in the garden on March 8th, so all about the same time. That allowed us to compare pretty accurately. They all came out of the same container. They'd all been stored the same way, etc., etc. So we actually saw that the gutters were starting on March 17th. They, they came out really, really fast, really good. They were in the greenhouse. Right, and that meant we were able to have really good control. We were watering them twice a day, or checking them two or three times a day at least and we would make sure that they stayed moist the whole times and having your soil moist when you're trying to get something to start is a great idea. Now we started using the gutter method. We watched Terry King's allotment in the UK and a few other people, yeah. Muddy Boots and I don't know if Steve does it or not. but oh, There's a bunch of the people in the UK that do it. So we watched them and, and one of the things that Terry King said was he uses the gutter system because it keeps the peas safe from mice. Mice. He has a big problem with mice. We actually have a lot of rodent pressure here early in the season. If we have anything up that's green at all, they come and they eat it and then we have nothing. So we tried the gutter method. Right. Irene did the 162 uh, Haas tool tray. Right. And we also did some in the ground because we wanted to compare and see, like, is it worth doing all three? Because a lot of times, people will do succession planting so that they have some that come off early, some that come off, you know, that sort of thing. Part of it depends on how you're going to preserve them, whether you just want to eat them fresh or whatever. We actually did not wind up preserving any this year. We had hoped that by planting a gigantic pack, we would be able to actually freeze some. But the reality was they came up well, they did well, but we got literally 102, 103, 104 degree weather. We had to stretch our water for three weeks, which we hadn't planned to do, but we got the peas planted out in the garden. Right, now we planted uh, the gutters. Let's talk about the gutters first because they were an interesting set of positives and negatives. Planted them on March 6th. They started popping on the 17th. By the 20th, we had true leaves. Uh, we t planted them out May, uh, rather April 12th. Now. Ideally, we would have actually planted them sooner than that, um, but we weren't ready. There was, there was one thing after another that went wrong, and we couldn't get them out as fast as we wanted to. We dug troughs, planted them in. We got them out, though. Right. We did get them out. By the 25th they were abs of April, they were absolutely full of pods and really cranking. We were starting to eat them pretty close after that. I mean, you know we were eating small ones and what I would do is I would just we bring them and just eat them every everything we did had its pros and cons is the best way to put it <laughs> the basic conclusion is we had three ways that we did it the gutters planting directly into the soil and starting it in a seed tray I would not do the tr seed tray again I had a lot of trouble with germination on that there were a couple of things that happened there we're not sure about all the details but 
basically I won't do that again. I will plant, I'll probably take one of the wicking totes and I will plant it full of peas and I will plan to do it as early as I dare in the greenhouse and and that'll be, that'll be earlier in March than than the March 8th that we did. So it might even be the end of February that we'll plant that in the, in the greenhouse and we'll keep it in there and we'll plan that it will stay in there until it's either dead or warm enough to put outside, whichever happens first. Because the first peas we got off were from the greenhouse. And they were delicious. They were really, really fat. Yeah. Well, the first peas of the season are always delicious. Yeah, they were wonderful. We were already eating them at the very end of April. They were full of pods. They were producing really well for us. And I would bring in a small handful every morning and we'd eat them with breakfast. No breakfast need, greens. Breakfast greens, that's right. Uh, the ones that we put, I won't, like I said, I won't do the seed tray again. That was not a good solution. Last year, we actually started a little earlier. We were harvesting our peas for the, in the first week in June. Now, if that had happened this year, we would have gotten no harvest. they had been all toast. Plan for next year. Ideally, what we will do, <laughs> and this is on the old ideally cross your fingers thing. We will have chosen our bed. This, this fall. fall. <laughs> yes, like mine too. And we will have the bed ready to go. It will be at least cleaned completely and if possible prepped. When we plant the gutters, we actually cut a trough in the bed and then the, the gutters literally are slid, the, the, the seedlings are just slid out of the gutters into the trough. Next year, the, tr the troughs have to be deeper. Yeah, one of the, one of the things that, that we do is one of us is always the person responsible for setting the rat traps and mostly picking them up in the morning. I normally set them. Sometimes I pick them up, sometimes Irene picks them up, but right. the big thing is you want to have one person do the real rounds of the garden every single morning so you can see things. One of the things that we noticed this year, we had, we've had really, really horrendous winds and a lot of heat. So we had more drying of the bed than usual, yes. and that definitely hurt our pea harvest. That really did, and it was it was like being in a blast furnace out there. And yeah. peas like cool weather. Now, when we planted those peas from the gutter, the soil level ended up about the same as the soil level in the gutter, pretty close. In normal circumstances, that would have been just fine. Right, but we don't. It doesn't rain here, <laughs> ever. Well, well, it does, yes. but, but generally speaking, you can't count on it ever to water your vegetables. So you had to be prepared to water your vegetables. If you look at what the Native Americans in this area did, they did flood irrigation using troughs. And a lot of modern agriculture does similar things. So at the end of the whole thing, one of the advantages of having Irene going out and looking at the beds every single day is that she'll notice some of the stuff. And when I went out, I noticed the things too. And what happened as the season progressed was the native soil shrunk down mm -hmm. because of the relative lack of water, right? which we also had to ration water because we had a small issue with our water company. right? So a whole lot of things collided together in a perfect storm of Pea catastrophe. Right. The worst part, the worst problem was actually the heat. I mean, the thrips are a problem, but the heat. Uh, we actually had an interesting experience regarding last year's uh, frozen vegetables. In May, we did some last minute freezing of snow peas and asparagus. Yeah, so we parboiled them yeah. and cooled them quickly. Them, right? cool them, and then you freeze them up. And we've done this before a zillion times. Many, many, many years. And all the stuff that we did earlier than that was fine. But the stuff we did at the end of May is bitter. The other day when I made a big stir fry using some of the snow peas, um, any, and I didn't sort exactly to make sure there was no thrip damage and stuff like that, but we think that the bitterness is caused by the heat. We pulled all the shelling peas today. Yeah. Irene and I went... Hello. Yes, that's my, I have to. All right, it's Friday, it's, it's pizza night. It's, it's pizza night. I have to flip the dough in a minute, yep. <laughs> so, 
Irene and I went out and uh, pulled the peas, the shelling peas, out of the bed. Right. All of them, including the ones that we planted directly in the soil. Mm -hmm. And as I was pulling the peas out of the gutter area, it looked exactly like what I expected. The soil levels were approximately equal. The peas were just abused by the wind and the heat and the thrips. <laughs> yep. But not it the was, rodents. The, but not no, the not rodents. The rodents. No, we abused the rodents, so they didn't. They didn't abuse. They were, I think I only had like two or three peas that were chewed this year, and that's nothing. You know, that's nothing. I I don't begrudge them that. So those peas are all gone, and we're yeah. ready to to turn that bed into other uses now. Right. We're gonna be we're gonna be replanting that probably in the next twenty four hours or so. What are we gonna put in the in that bed now, Irene? Uh, we've been debating whether we were going to put um, green beans in there or whether we're gonna put the rest of the tomatoes in there or I think we'll probably put green beans in there. I think we'll put green beans. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. It's legume after legume, which I try not to do, but it's not gonna be a problem. Well the we did get a soil test done this year. We we've been trying to get to that video for a couple of months. In fact we got the soil results back literally the day that we were getting ready to plant the peas out in the garden. Mm -hmm. So we were able to actually amend the soil or fertilize the soil mm -hmm. appropriately to get the nutrients up to the level where they needed to be. Right. Um, all in all, a mixed bag, as, as are most of our experiments, but we learned a lot. Being... Wish we hadn't had to learn some of those things. Yeah, well, for instance, one of our problems is none of the drip line I own can be buried. I have the kind that you can buy at Home Depot, which is definitely a surface only. I have another kind of drip line which is sold to professional agricultural people, but it is not a buried one either. So our goal for next year is to have those two troughs dug deeper than this year so that it's, you're actually creating a bowl. Now watch, it'll rain like heck, right? But, uh, but that's, yeah, okay, that's okay, it'll we've drain. We've got good drainage. Um, but to create a bowl for your piece to be in, but in the bottom of that, I want a drip line. And it has to be a variable drip line. So that's something I just don't own right now. But well, we've been planting peas for 40 some years at this point. We've, on again, off we've, again, different we've grown, places, yeah. We've grown peas in a lot of different climates. We used to plant peas in Massachusetts. We sowed them in... Used in, to do uh, them in the, in in the, the, in the, the thaw between... between winter thaw. Sometime end of January, beginning of February. February. Right. You ground softened enough, you could the beds would be ready, you put them in, it would freeze, it would snow, it would snow, it would snow, and when the snow melted off, the peas would come flying out of the ground and just grow like crazy. Yeah, so this is not our first rodeo when it comes to peas. No. So but I But it is it is it is a different rodeo. It is though. a different rodeo. Uh, I never had problems anywhere that I can think of ever of pests on peas, except for birds. And, and, and rodents. And children. Don't forget children. children. No, children were eating the peas. <laughs> I accepted that as, as I, the whole point was to get the children to eat the peas. So having them eat it in the garden, I, <laughs> that's fine. I hope that this has provided a little bit of an overview of our great pea extravaganza 2020. Yeah, and this is just part one. We still are doing stuff with the snow peas. Which are still producing. Yes, they're doing much better. Well, <laughs> we can keep on talking for a really long time about yep. peas, but... We, I definitely hope that people got something out of this. I hope they're intrigued by our experiences. Thanks very much for watching. We hope that you found this interesting and educational. And if we, you have questions, please ask because I do have I do have notes. We we didn't want to go through every little tiny detail of notes and stuff, but I do have notes on stuff. And there will be another one uh, as follow up on the snow peas as soon as the snow peas are finished. Yeah, yeah. And they're not finished yet. No, probably so, have a week or two more. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications because she's always doing something crazy on the homestead. That's true. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. Bye.